One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's working okay, Joe. But I don't get anything from you. The needle hasn't even moved yet. Come on, Joe. It's getting late. It's cold. Take it easy, Marty. There's an awful lot of spaghetti down here. What's the reading on the meter now? Pin still hasn't moved. You must have the wrong lead in. Okay, I'll try it again. Keep watching it, huh? You got a reading yet, Marty? I must have something loused up down here. Marty, put your hand on the housing. Tell me if it starts to heat up. What's that gonna do? I don't understand. All right, so you don't understand it. The boss wants it done, so let's do it, huh? Now, Marty, don't argue with me. I know a lot more about this stuff than you do. You want to be here all night? You feel anything yet, Marty? No, Joe, no, nothing. You don't see him like this very often. Except maybe at Sing Sing. This fellow's always working pairs. Where's his partner? There wasn't anybody else around when I got here. Frank. You in charge here? Right. What happened? He sucked in the mainline power cable. Pretty stupid. Have some charity. The man's not here to defend himself. I wish he could. Because none of this makes sense. What does it? The whole thing. Who is this fellow working with? I don't know. Well, what kind of a job was he doing? I don't know. You don't know? You're in charge of this district? You don't know who he was working with or what he was doing? What do you know? Well, I'll tell you a few things, you know. He didn't work for me. That equipment in the truck I never laid eyes on before. And that truck doesn't belong to the telephone company. I said my head is better than all your gadgets. I just want to make sure that you lab boys earn your pay. It's a cold night out. It's 10 degrees above. Hold it, hold it. I'm getting a weather report. Mike, I've been thinking. These fellows always work in teams. I was sure Jockey wouldn't be wearing anything but long winter underwear under his overalls, just like the dead man. That means he can't take his overalls off very easily. I think right now we should be looking for somebody who's running around trying not to get picked up in Lyman's overalls, the dead man's partner. All right, get going. Parker speaking. This goes for this precinct and all adjoining precincts. All patrolmen and all cars. Be on the lookout for a guy in lineman's overalls. Yeah, telephone company lineman. Say, if I had a description, I'd give it to you, wouldn't I? Maybe he's wearing a pair of wire cutters in his teeth. 
Any other ideas? Nobody would go through all the trouble to fix up a telephone company truck for fun. What were they doing in that manhole? Setting up bookie phones? Nobody would dare do that in my precinct. Say, this deal must have been worthwhile after the phony telephone truck. If there hadn't been an accident, what would they have done? Who's the truck registered to? No registry, Mike. Those plates were stolen early this afternoon. Where was the truck made up like that? Painted and outfitted? Probably in some private garage. Who's the dead guy? What about the fingerprints? No fingerprints. He was hit by over 4,000 volts. What about finding where all that electronic equipment came from? Well, most of that was commercial components. I'm sure any good electronics man could very easily have assembled it. Nothing but negatives. Nobody on my side. Come in. Lieutenant Parker. What's your name again? Patrolman Harden, sir. I have some good news for you. We can use some. What is it? I found this in the burned truck. A tape recorder fell on it, so it isn't burned too badly. His name is Marty Minters, and he lives at 123 North Morningside, and I... I can read. How come you didn't find this, Adam? Oh, I was just lucky. I... Checking things while I was waiting for the wrecking truck to get there. Take this down to the lab. Yes, sir. Nice going. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. There's your address. You and Frank go out over and see the wife and ask her to help us out. Well, you think we can help her out? Would you like Harden to go? Why not? Look, Mike, I can do my own dirty work. Maybe we ought to have Harden on the squad, huh? Adam, you realize this is the first time you've ever been caught off base? Mike, I didn't want to go into the truck until the lab men got there. I was afraid I might destroy some latent fingerprints. Get Harden back in here. What's the matter? What are you doing here? Delivering Mr. Fairport's car, like every night. What's up? Oh, it's you. Okay, get moving. You crazy or something? Just get moving. We're looking for a guy in overalls. Tell me, how do you think rehearsals went? I let every man do the job he's paid to do. Ask the director. That's his job. You can tell me. You put up the money. I wish I hadn't. Then pull out.
easy, David. I don't want a face full of windshield. Tell me, Lily, would you have left Sam and started to divorce him if I hadn't promised to back your show? No. I always liked your honesty. I didn't ask you to back the show. I know. I offered to do so. Because I knew it was what you wanted. And I wanted you. Meaning, I don't want you? I wish you did. But you never learned how to love anybody. What happened, David? You don't usually talk this way, or drink so much, or walk up and down your study half the night. Lily, I'm choking to death. Everything's going wrong. If I'm not careful, I'm going to wind up a financial basket case. Yes. Ever since I was 13 years old, men have promised me the world. Anything you want, honey, anything. Except, only, but, you pull out if you want to. Can't you think of me just once? Don't worry, your show's safe. I'm just a little pinch, that's all. you against that door. Lily, call the police. Why'd you get so excited when you saw this man? Why'd you threaten to run him down? I don't know. I just thought he was a sneak thief or a, a hold-up man. You mean when you called us, you didn't know we were looking for a man in overalls? No. What's your full name, sir? David Clark Fairport. This Mrs. Fairport? No. Mrs. Sam Braden. I'm getting a divorce. You're just in time for the entertainment. This guy's right out of the Arabian Nights. What do we know about him? Does he have a record? His name's Joe Cawley, working step. No record. Tells a beautiful yarn. Go ahead, Joe, tell him. I already told you three times. Let's make it four times, Joe. <sighs> a guy phoned me. What guy? I don't know, no name. He asked me if I wanted a job, so I asked him how much he was paying. He said 200 bucks a week. <laughs> Sorry I took off my overcoat. I could have had a bigger sleeve to laugh up. Oh, I was laughing too until the next day a letter came and 800 bucks fell out. A month's salary in advance. For doing what? Well, I don't know. He uh, said he'd call me, but I wasn't doing any work. Then three weeks later, another letter came. This one had 3,000 bucks in it. You must be in direct communication with Santa Claus. Well, you can just check my bank deposits. We'll do that later, Joe. Get to the good part of the story, huh? Come on. Well, a week later, I got another phone call. He tells me to pick up an old truck and fix it up. He tells me what he wants in it, what kind of equipment. And he told me that to hire anybody I wanted to help me. Help you do what, Joe? Well, he told me the street and where to park the truck. And he said he wanted a phone tap on every office in the block. And he wanted to record everything. And that... That'll be fine, Joe. Set to music, to the tune of ten years in jail, homicide during the commission of a crime. What are you talking about, Lieutenant? You're nuts. It was an accident. Tapping phone wires is a federal offense. Well, maybe it is, but thinking about it ain't. All right, now, maybe I wanted to tap some phones, but I never got to it. The first line I picked up went... So did Marty Mintis. Where does he fit into this? Well, I met him on a couple of jobs, installation jobs for the Carlson Electronics out in Long Island City. He said he needed some extra money. Yeah, he sure did, Joe. We just broke the news to his wife. She's carrying their third child. 
All right, all right. So guys get killed in traffic accidents, don't they? I made a mistake, that's all. I picked up the wrong wire. Pretty strange mistake for an electronics expert, isn't it? Hey, what are you guys trying to do to me? A uh, federal crime homicide, the whole book? So I painted some jalopy to look like a, a truck from a phone company. Let Mr. Bell sue me. So I, I, I took the manhole cover off a sewer. You want to charge me for breaking an entrance? Citizen's got a right to be in a sewer if he wants to, hasn't he? With all the rest of the rats. Welcome, Frank. Come on. This character tells his story so convincingly, the jury will probably believe it. It's a real expert job, like an artificial flower. But it smells like stinkweed. Kidding. She ain't even up yet. Go get lost. I lose my job, Mr. Braden. You? She can't even get dressed without you. Get out of here, Sam. What's the matter? I ain't got a right. You're still my wife, you know. And you look like a million bucks. After, after taxes. I know. What do you want, Sam? What do I want? Take a look at this. What, are you crazy or something? What are you trying to pull? A man got into the trunk of the car. Yeah, I know that. I read it. But the guy happens to be Joe Corley, and he's done a lot of work for me. Now, you must have met him before. I never laid eyes on him. Look, Lily. Now, you wanted this divorce, and you wanted this Fairport guy. OK. But I didn't want to see you in any trouble. I only know what I read in the newspaper, Sam. On my honor as Girl Scout. Now, is that on a level? Now, you can depend on me. You know I was always there. So was I. Like a bird in a cage. Do me something. I love you. You love the way I look. The way I'm built. The way other men look at me. What's my name? Look, I know what you are. You're the hop, skip, and jump champion of the whole world. You jump to this Fairport guy because he's, he's Ivy League. He comes from an old family. Me, I'm a big, loud-mouthed slob from nowhere. Lily. Lily. Drop the divorce. Come on home. Why do you need me, Sam? You can yell at the servants. Servants can't yell back. Besides, nobody can tell me off the way you can. Go away, Sam. What do you want, Lily? Ten cents or the whole five and dime, I'll buy it for you. How about, um, Tiffany? Why not? I can't get you the whole store now. I can't afford it. How about part down the rest as soon as I make it? What's my name, Sam? Your name is Money. How do you know? Did you ever ask me? I don't want you to laugh in my face. Oh, go on. Ask. Just once. Lily, I don't know what they did to you at that orphanage, but the part of you that feels anything went into deep freeze. You think so, Sam? You think it was too late by the time you met me? I think so. Maybe you're right. I don't know. Lily, I've got feelings. I know I love you. Ask me to love you. Now, you can't. What are we kidding about? Goodbye, Sam. Goodbye. Get him. Yes, sir. I'll send him right in to see you, Mr. Braden. Mr. Alvis? Yeah? Mr. Braden wants to see you in his office right away, sir. And his blood pressure's up again. Did you put the raw carrots on his desk? Oh, yes, sir. OK.
morning, Sam. You look great today. Yeah, well, I don't feel so great. One of these days, I'm going to have a heart attack. Without me, you'll be a bum again. We'll take care of you. Stop taking those pills. You'll live to be 100. Don't worry about it. Yeah, well, I won't live so long if you don't stop driving me crazy. I know you, Charlie. You get big ideas. You drink them up like strong tea. Huh? Were you drinking them up last night? Me? When? When that kid got burned in the truck. Me? Now, look, will you stop playing parties with me? I know you like a book. You sent Corley out to do something. Now, what was he doing? Huh? He was tapping the wires in Fairport's office in that theater. Then what happened? Nothing happened. We get a lawyer for Corley. It was only negligence, even if they can prove it was manslaughter. And it was an accident. What can they do to him? Was it an accident, Charlie? Don't con me. Um, that dumb kid, Mitters. Four jobs he does for us, and right away he's trying to put a bite on us. For how much? You think he would have stopped with one payment? I moved fast. I did what you would have done. The only I wouldn't have lost that up. I tell you, and I tell you, it's like talking to the wall. We're legitimate now. We got eight companies going for us. We got it made. But you, everything you touch, you foul up. You walk into a crossfire, I got to pull you out. You let a crowd trap you in, I got to go in and get them. OK, Sam, OK. Tell me again how you saved my life during the war. What's the matter? It ain't true? Huh? Yeah, it's true. All right, then shut up. And who got us the money to get us in this war surplus business? OK, Sam, OK. I feel like I got a weight in my back. I owe you for so much. My life, my job, everything I got. So then what's wrong with me trying to do something for you, Sam? Can I try to help you out? How? Well, the one thing I know more about than you, Sam, is women. I'm trying to get you back the one thing you can't get for yourself. You want her back? You're talking where it hurts, Charlie. Fairport's a lightweight. His father put him where he is. By himself, he'd be singing for his coffee in some Bowery mission. Well, I'm taking care of him. And when I'm finished, you're going to come home some night, and Lily's going to be right there just waiting for you. Assistant DA, Detective Flint, Sergeant Carl. How are you? How are you doing? Hello. Got anything? No, Mike. Corley's known in the trade as a pretty good electronics technician installing hi-fi sets, but he's never been in any trouble. And Minnis? Minnis was a good worker, good guy, a very nice little widow. Mr. Richfield has some news for us. Would you tell him? No, there's not much to tell. A high-priced lawyer, a top man, got Corley out on $25,000 bail. What? Adams suspects the syndicate. A nationwide conspiracy to take over the phone company. Adam, you read too many books. Maybe. But one of the books I remember reading was The Principles of Logic. And it's just not logical to me that an electronics technician could afford a high-priced lawyer and make $25,000 bail. I must read that book. We've got a charge of involuntary manslaughter against Corley, but I've never seen such an incredible case. My problem is that juries don't like fairy stories, neither does the DA. The courts of this sovereign state still make their decisions on facts. Wait a minute. A, C, E, G, I. What is that? That's the alphabet, Mike, with every other letter left out. Just like Corley's story. Power lines, truck, and so on. When Harden came in here with that wallet, he said he had found it on a tape machine, right? Right. Was there anything on the tape? After it had been in the fire? Well, it's worth a try. What else have we got? A tail on Corley. Where's the tape now? The lab? Sure. Why do you eat lemons if you don't like the taste? Patrolman Harden's being helpful again. He left this memorandum for you on my desk. 
During my free time, I have made an investigation, and I have discovered that the relationship between Mrs. Braden and Mr. Fairport includes the fact that he is backing a Broadway play in the theater for her. It is rumored that Mr. Fairport is short of money, although the general impression is that Mr. Fairport is rich. That's how to have your cake and eat it, too. If he thinks he's short of money, he ought to try living on what I make. File it. In a filing case! How do you want me to file it? Under F for Fairport or H for Harden, Patrolman First Class? Come on, Joe. It's getting late. Cold. Take it easy, Marty. There's an awful lot of spaghetti down here. What's the reading on the meter now? Ten still hasn't moved. You must have the wrong lead in. Okay, I'll try it again. Keep watching it, huh? You got a reading yet, Marty? I must have something loud up down here. He must have had his mic open. All that proves is that there was an accident. They didn't know what they were doing, that's all. Marty, put your hand on the housing and tell me if it starts to heat up. What's that gonna do? I don't understand. All right, so you don't understand it. The boss wants it done, so let's do it, huh? Now, Marty, don't argue with me. I know a lot more about this stuff than you do. You want to be here all night? Wait a minute. Would you play that part over again with the boss? I must have something loud up down here. Marty, put your hand on the housing and tell me if it starts to heat up. What's that gonna do? I don't understand. All right, so you don't understand it. The boss wants it done, so let's do it, huh? Now, Marty, don't argue with me. I know a lot more about this stuff than you do. You want to be here all night? You feel anything yet, Marty? No, Joe, no, nothing. Mike, there's your accident. He had Mintus put his hand on that metal for one reason, to get a jolt. Can the DA's office go into court with evidence like that? It still doesn't prove intent. Manslaughter at most. I want a 24-hour tail put on Corley from now on. And when he's picked up, I want his boss with him. Considering a merger, not a stock raid. Mr. Haywick, I don't know anything about it. Well, I can assure you that none of my people leaked the information. I'll watch the market tomorrow. If there's any more unusual activity, I'll call old man Williams and we'll break off negotiations with you. More information leaks. How can so many things go wrong at the same time unless somebody is making them happen? Miss Hanford, suppose you were looking for somebody who was passing information out of this office. Who would you look at first? It's not fair. There are always some people you like more than others. Mr. Fairport's office. Just one moment, Mrs. Braden. Thanks. Hello, darling. Ah, oh, you're my medicine. Plans? Oh, give me 15 minutes, I'll pick you up. I'll buy you a drink before rehearsal. Goodbye, dear. <laughs> As a kid, my hair was stringy and my skin was bad, and I weighed 90 pounds. I wonder how you would have looked at me then. 
I would have looked at you then just the way I look at you now. You want to bet? You don't feel anything the way I do, do you? Where are you, Lily? Your face is there, but your eyes are like the windows of an empty house. Where are you, Lily? I'm here, David. I'm here. Oh, hello. Oh, Mr. Fairport. Yes? I say, I got an urgent message for you. Mr. Williams has been phoning every 15 minutes. He wants you to get up to his apartment. Any time you get there, he'll be waiting, he said. Aren't you coming in? See you later. Getting cold? Young fellow like you? I'm out here every day. I thrive on it. You have thin blood. You're not like your father. I could depend on him. But you have thin blood and you've got a lot to learn. Well, I'm willing, sir. You're willing, but you're not capable. You've got no bite, David. No teeth. You're a toothless mouse and you're dealing with lions. Yes, lions. Do you know what happens to mice when they play with lions? They don't even make a good mouthful. You're a fool, David. I don't understand you, sir. Only three men in the organization were under suspicion. I gave each one of them a piece of information. All different. Only yours was used, David. Fine. Three hours after I call you and tell you that we're going to buy into Torrance Industries, you bought the controlling stock. No, sir, I didn't. You check the market carefully, David. Check my books. Check my personal records. Call my broker. Get a list of my transactions for the last six months. I didn't say you bought under your own name. But you're a mouse, David. We are not interested in Torrance Industries. And neither is anybody else at this time. You are the only one who had any reason to buy into Torrance heavily at this time because you believed me. I didn't do this thing, sir. On my honor, I didn't. I consulted the members of the board. Your resignation has been accepted. Goodbye, David. <laughs> David? Oh, Lily, stop saying that, please. It's just seeing you, worrying about you. I don't worry about me, just you. Maybe things went wrong because I, I can't see anything or anyone but you. I, uh, I'm, I'm very tired, David. I think I'll go down to my apartment. You better get some sleep, too. Lily, wouldn't it ever occur to you to ask what kind of trouble I'm in? Whatever happened, David, I'm sure you handled it beautifully. You always do. Good night.
want to reach out my hand and stop him. Was he alone? He must have been drunk or crazy. What reason could he have had to climb out there that way? But was he alone? Yes. Oh, Adam. Thank you. What is it? Looks like an antenna. Sorry we had to awaken you, Mrs. Braden. It's always the same way. I go to sleep feeling safe and secure. I wake up and everything's gone. There's a man named Braden out here. He wants to see his wife. Let him in. I just heard the news broadcast. I figured you might need me, you know? Thanks, Sam. Lily, I want to talk to you alone. What do you want, Sam? Hey. Hey, she ain't mixed up in this, is she? He was alone. Apparently, he was slightly drunk, and he reached over the terrace for something. He must have slipped. Lily. Come on home. I mean, I mean, you ain't got nobody else except me now. And, well, Lily, I'm, I'm asking you to try and love me now. Come on home. All right, Sam. Take me home. Tell me all this stuff was found in Fairport's apartment? Every room was bugged. That guy was living in a miniature broadcasting station. There was a transmitter in every TV set, on all the radios, in the kitchen, in the bathroom, too, and on all the telephones. Why? Blackmail? Where were all these transmissions being picked up? Could have been anywhere in a radius of two or three miles. Can any of this stuff be run down? It's just ordinary commercial equipment, Mike. It's made by half a dozen different companies, sold in 150 retail outlets. Hmm. Like trying to clean your nails with a baseball bat, huh? Where's Adam? Public library. Huh? Yeah, checked out of here, said he was gonna go talk to Mrs. Braden. Checked in from there, and 15 minutes later, said he was leaving to go to the public library. Lieutenant Parker speaking. Hey, careful what you say. It might be bugged. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't wish to enlighten me any further, huh? Okay. <coughs> Nobody wants to tell me anything around here. That was Detective Adam Flint. He has left the public libraries on his way to Wall Street. And from there, he's going on to... Long Island City. Well, there it is, Mike. As you can see, everything is connected with tapping. For what purpose? Industrial spying, commercial warfare. Pick up your competitor's new ideas. If he's doing any research, why, well, you can reap the benefits of that research for the cost of the tapping equipment. If he's planning new investments, mergers, or selling out, or diversification in any new competitive line. Well, you can know it just as soon as he does. In other words, Fairport is worth bugging for that information. Is that what you're telling me? No, leaks, Mike. Leaks. Fairport was being pushed out because his company felt that he was using secret company information for his own personal gain. Yeah, but who's going to make a buck from picking up what they picked up from Fairport? Well, Frank, that I don't know yet. I will admit, however, that my first hunch was Braden, especially when I saw him look at his wife. I have never seen such a look of, of hunger before in a man's face. Well, I figured he has a good motive. Push out Fairport, break him, and take back his wife. So I made arrangements to see him. Well, he had me wait about 20 minutes, and I looked around a bit. 
That's when I found out that his place was bugged, too. Exactly the same as Fairport's. So then I checked on his companies. And I found out that he owned the outfit that Corley worked for. And Minters worked for Corley. Neat. There you have your A, C, E, G. No, Mike. There I have my A, B, C, D. But there's still an X, an unknown. That's the next chapter. I haven't gotten to that. <laughs> okay, Mike. I'll tell you about the X. Why should Braden have his own apartment bugged? Let's skip to Y. W, H, Y. All right. Why shouldn't we listen in two? Charlie. Hi, Lily. Where's Sam? He's upstairs. He's taking a bath. Oh. You're drunk. That's right. Why don't you go upstairs and take a look? It's quite a sight. Talk to you, Sam. What are you doing in a bubble bath? What's the matter? It's against the law? Hey, please, come on. Come on. Hi. Right. Besides, I want to smell nice for Lily. Yeah. Hey, don't! What's the matter with you? It's crazy or something? Touch a radio and you're in the water, you can get yourself killed that way. Well, it's too loud. All right. I'm supposed to be the schnook in this outfit. Sam, you know what it's like to owe somebody practically all of your life? It hurts. Take a look at your bank book. It won't hurt so much. And a guy can't pay off is a terrible thing. Well, you forget it. Now, you got me Lily back. We're even. How are we? Sure. You mean we're still pals? Sure, like we always were. A liar. Who was it said, maybe I got to get rid of Charlie? Charlie's a schnook, unquote. I got this place wired, Sam. Same as I wired Fairport's. Charlie, you bugged my place? Why? You may be smarter than me, Sam, but I get things done. Oh, for you. Always for you, Sam. Hayden had that kid Metters killed for you so you could get Lily back. Look, Charlie. Now you look. Look at all the years I've been the jerk in this outfit. This way, Charlie. That way, Charlie. Don't be a dope, Charlie. Kiss my foot, Charlie. Well, I'm giving it back to you, Sam. Hat, Sam. <laughs> Watch out! Sam! Lily! Lily! Yes! Lily! What is it? Lily, something's happened to Sam. What? What? He was listening to the music. The radio fell in the bathtub. He's dead. Oh, Lily. Lily. There's no one but me now. Oh, poor Lily. Oh, Lily, Lily, Lily. For years I wanted to hold you in my arms like this. Charlie. Charlie. Lily, I've always felt this way about you. Don't you worry, Lily. Because I can protect you. Protect me? You know what people will say. You want a divorce from him. And you went to Fairport. You only came home when Fairport died. But don't you worry, Lily, because I can clear you. I was up there when it happened, Lily. No. Oh, Lily. Lily, don't look at me like that. No! 
So you're next. All right. It really doesn't matter. I've been living with cockroaches all of my life. If it brings you around. Oh! had to run away. I ran from every foster home I was ever in. I ran from men, and all of them were pigs. I'm glad Charlie's dead. I'm glad Sam's dead. And you know what? Every penny Sam had comes to me. You know what I'm going to do with it? I'm going to use it for myself, for me. No more running away. Lieutenant Parker. Hello, Mike. Adam. Pick up Joe Corley for the murder of Marty Mintis. Yeah. What are you reading, Mike? The Principles of Logic. Hey, what kind of a book is this, anyway? The whole first three chapters are about numbers. Arithmetic. Did you understand it, Adam? Well, I, uh, I studied it at college, Mike, but the professor, he really had to explain it. Okay. You're not hurting my feelings. The reason I have such a good squad is I do not allow anyone on it unless they're smarter than I am. There are eight million stories in the Naked City. This has been one of them. Green Gems film presentation from Columbia Pictures, produced by Herbert B. Leonard.